Imagine going to your school's field trip after getting permission from your parents. Seems like a very big deal to little children, and so it was a big deal for the Ainsley Park Secondary School students. But little did they know that this school trip would be their last. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to tell you all about the worst mountaineering disaster in British history that resulted in the deaths of five little children and their guide. So, make sure to sit back and stick with me till the end of the video so that you don't miss anything. Now, without any further ado, let's dive straight into it. This school trip was arranged as an ambitious winter expedition, which might have resulted in professional climbers, but the only thing which resulted in this expedition was their horrible death. In November 1971, these six kids were left to freeze to death, and their bodies were found days later at a remote mountain. This trip was meant to be the navigational winter exercise, and they planned to travel the Cairngorm Plateau from Cairn Mountain to Ben McDewey. So, in order to do that, six 15-year-old young students and their two leaders set off from the Ligon Lee Outdoor Center, but as the weather got worse, all of them were trapped under the snow and counted the hours before freezing to death except the one teenager who managed to survive the deadly cold. Now before agreeing to this journey, all of them were fully aware of how things can go wrong in winter. Not to mention, the weather forecast was also not giving them a green signal, but despite everything, they thought it was the best for the teenagers to face the arduous climate of the mountain. Moreover, before starting their journey, they also got all the equipment needed for their expedition. The Lagan Lee Outdoor Center equipped them with all the mountaineering equipment they had needed, from mice axes to Icelandic sleeping bags to cagoules and crampons. They had everything they needed to start their journey. Although the forecast was not in their favor, and there was always a plan B if anything went wrong, the group had already decided to go to the current shelter, which is a small stone on the plateau high up. As they were climbing up, the weather started to get worse, and soon they faced a pretty weird blizzard. Now they knew that the only option to save themselves was to do plan B. But finding that shelter wasn't so easy for them as there was a total whiteout. The group's leader who was a student in her final year at Dunfermline College of Physical Education in Fife, named Catherine Davidson, tried to do something which didn't turn out so well for them. After being stranded in the whiteout condition and still not being able to locate the shelter, Catherine finally decided to make a temporary camp, which was only 500 yards away from the shelter, which was totally hidden due to intense snow. But since anything seemed better than standing on the mountain, the site chosen by Catherine was the one known for accumulating snow the most. So, if you ask me, it was the worst place to camp even during normal conditions. Unfortunately, Catherine had no idea about that. Like the video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe as a little action from you can help my channel grow immensely. Now let's get back to the video. The decision made by Catherine was literally their last option, but at the same time it was a matter of life or death. According to John Duff, Braemar Mountain Rescue Team's leader, the decision was the one which proved to be fatal for the entire group as the place where they set their winter bivouac was the most dangerous one on the plateau. Moreover, according to him, the entire idea of taking such young children to this atrocious expedition was unwise from the beginning. The group built a snow wall and took out their sleeping bags. They were terrified, but at the same time their spirits were high. Also, their leader didn't step back from cheering the young children and she started to sing songs to keep them motivated. But as the storm started to get worse, the snow started to accumulate in their sleeping bags and they all feared that they would die due to suffocation. Now coming to the most heartbreaking scene which must have destroyed their spirits was when they saw the flares from the searching team. It was so brave for those to search for them in that blizzard situation, and they did try their best to find the group. Since they had spent the entire day at the same spot, at nighttime they saw flares in the sky and shouted at the top of their lungs to be saved. They even tried to find their own flares, but unfortunately, they had lost them in the snow somewhere. 
Now the only option to be saved was to get noticed by the search team by screaming. But despite all their efforts, the search party went forward, and their last hope to be saved vanished right in front of their eyes. They must have felt so helpless. Now it was Sunday, the second day of them being trapped at the same spot. Hypothermia had now kicked in. Hypothermia is a condition which makes people believe things which are not even there or happening, and it occurs due to long exposure to intense cold. As a result, the children started to get delirious and were drowsy. Hypothermia also made some of them believe that they were too hot. So they stepped out of their sleeping bags and fastened the process of freezing to death. Now it was Monday. Most of the children died, but Catherine was still alive. Barely alive, but she didn't give up. She crawled her way to be noticed by the helicopters from the RAF Lukers in Fife. Her orange color jacket was noticed by the helicopter, but when she was found, she had started experiencing severe hypothermia. With her hands frozen solid to her legs locked in a kneeling position, she was found in a totally devastated condition. At the same time, the parents told how they didn't know that their children were going so high up on the mountain. They had only thought that they were going to Lake and Leah and back. Now coming back to the rescue team, they had to go through waist-deep snow to reach a scene that would haunt them for life. The rescue team saw six dead bodies of children either fully or partially covered in snow. But 15-year-old Raymond Leslie, the seventh and last body they discovered, was alive. They kept him warm as he was helicoptered to Rig Moore Hospital in Inverness, where he miraculously recovered completely. He out of all the children was the only one to survive and it was indeed considered a miracle. Susan Byrne, Lorraine Dick, Carol Bertram, Diane Dudgeon, and William Kerr were amongst the youngsters who perished on the Cairngorm Plateau, along with Sheila Sunderland, an 18-year-old training instructor. The parents of the children were totally devastated, and this is what one of the parents said. We didn't know that our plan was to spend a weekend on a hilltop in the middle of winter. The children's remains had to be left on the mountain until they could be carried down the next day because it had started to get dark once more at that point. The death of these children was considered needless and everyone in Britain mourned their young deaths. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. If you need unlimited stock videos, music, photos and graphics as used in this video, be sure to click the link in the description. Until then, see you next time.